A motley group of redcaps guards the gate ahead. It's strange that a noble of the summer court would retain those violent, unpredictable creatures as servants. The sprawling courtyard seems deserted. A lone what tower. What can I do for you, Outlander? Lord Xavier will likely be found inside. Lady White Lily has requested that you find her a snack. A frivolous request, it seems. Yet, in the Feywild, small promises may have strange consequences. This storehouse is occupied by a very energetic chest. It gapes at you with a big, toothy grin and speaks. Approach, friends! What I am to work become Come, sharper let us when talk. you add two letters to it. This tree stands here by itself. A single, brilliantly red apple hangs from one of its branches. With a quiver of excitement, the tree drops the apple at your feet. Done. Mm. 
time to rest. The tower is sealed. As you reach for the door, a swirling torrent... dog guards this door, all by itself, or so it seems. Eladrin guards wearing the garb of the summer court await you in this room. One of them holds up a hand to hail you. Strangers, I would parlay a door without clothes. You may step forward in safety to speak. You are facing an unavoidable battle with your life. You have chosen to stay at blows and spare their lives, even at the risk of your own. Replaced Grey Moss must be desperate now. You have reached the top of the tower, where a regal Eladrin silently awaits your approach. He appears to be alone. Yes, you fool, I'm still here! Yes, you fool, I'm still here! But your precious Grey Moss is dead, trusting idiot. Who told you the Prince of Frost wanted you dead, hmm? Me? Who said these outlander dotes were his tools? Yeah, me. But it was you who were supposed to die willingly on their plates as a distraction while I do hear some bidding. But no, guess I just have to tell you all myself now. You need to watch closely to see which one is the real threat. The hag dies, screeching to the last. After a moment, the Viscount rises to his feet and blurts, Who was that? What's going on? I demand an explanation!
party here is in full swing, and Cascading Springs Cottage is clearly the worse for wear for it. A harried housemaid waits on the walkless satyrs. The party here is in full swing, and Cascading Springs Cottage is clearly the worse for wear for it. A harried housemaid waits for the raucous satyrs. It's surprising to find a large, well-stocked library in a house given over to an endless party. It's even more surprising to find a sphinx sitting in the middle of it. This large key is labelled Spring House. It seems someone was trying to hide it. Lush collection of what is found suggests that this room is the conservatory. A note next to the second reads reads, Slate read. Keep away from sunlight and damp soil. You drop a few of the magic seeds on the ground. Huge weeds burst from the earth, and the thirsty plants quickly drain the moisture from the surrounding soil. Rushes up from the ground in one corner of the room, forming a large pool. This must be the cascading spring the house is named after. This large barrel is marked black powder in large letters. In even larger letters below are the words, keep away from open flame. Towering weeds spring up the instant you cast the magic seeds on the ground. The twisting brambles suck up every drop of water nearby leaving Cascading Springs dry as a bone.
There's food in the kitchen and the drink. Well, everywhere. Including the floor, I see. And make yourself at home. And don't forget to pour one out for our dear host. To Lord Arden. May his slumbers be peaceful. The careless satyr swings his torch too close to the powder keg, which explodes in a shower of sparks. The party goers turn to gawk at the spectacle. You attempt to take the sign, but are spotted by the attentive satyrs before you can find loose. It's a simple task to remove the sign. The satyrs are still distracted by the recent fireworks. You deftly replace the cottage sign with the sign from the library. Seething with anger, the master of the revels reluctantly agrees to leave. The deal's a deal, it's true. We'll leave, but nothing in the deal says we can't rip you to shreds on our way out. The revels have finally ended, and not in a way the satyrs expected. You enter the grove the villager told you about and spot a small encampment in the distance. Perhaps the... Well met, travelers! A hearty voice calls as you approach. Are you here to help us slay the great beast? you. More than you'll ever know. Now, bring your courage to the fore. You find your confidence well placed. Spindly legs rise from the dirt, and the wind lurches forward. Creatures spring up around you, rushing to defend the wind. The strange gemstone seems to be protecting this creature from spells and weapons. seems undaunted by your weapons and spells. A creature sporting an unusual gemstone seems to be avoiding you.
gemstone cracks and the windmill shakes violently. brought it to life seems to have left it thank you the old knight says your trust in me brought us victory this day you've earned a reward she continues but speak with me if you'd like to help a little further somehow i feel the culprit is still nearby His disguise is foiled. The gnome sends his pets forward to attack. Never again will he pose a threat. The knight tells you. It's not clear whether this structure was meant to be a shelter, a temple, or just a decorative addition to the view. Within the distance of just a few short steps, the temperature plummets and snow covers the ground. Change in the climate surely wasn't natural. Spine Palace, home to the Baron and Baroness Bitterspine, and one of the many holdings of the Prince of Frost. You have arrived at Bitterspine Palace, home of one of the Prince of Frost's vassals. You proceed with caution. Whether you're respected by the Baroness or not, the Prince of Frost's cold reputation is known throughout the Feywild. The Prince of Frost stands before a throne overlooking the crowded ballroom, the Baroness beside him. However, the third throne on the dais stands empty. The air chills as the Archfey points a finger toward him. Why do you disturb in your presence, Outlander? If I may, my prince, says the Baroness, a connection in the summer court sent word of the Outlander's arrival. I have granted them an audience with me. 
I assure you, they will not disturb the water. Oh, He's likely to be avoiding the crowd somewhere, perhaps out on the windward balcony. The door to the treasure vault is bolted shut. Perhaps one of the wait staff knows how to get inside. Water elementals flood out of the treasure vault to confront the intruders. You hear a bell chime in the ballroom as you pull this lever. Notice a bizarre painting depicting the wintertide ballroom. To your surprise, you were able to step through it and into the ballroom itself. bell chime in the ballroom as you pull this lever. This door leads out to the windward balcony. From the dim gems on either side, you can see that it has been sealed to prevent guests from following Osha outside. The court advisor stares off into the distance. The sound of your foot turns around and lets out a dejected sigh. Osha scoffs at you and refuses to hand over the Aurora Garden key. Just as you open your mouth to reply, he attacks. Osha collapses to the floor. You grab the Aurora Garden key as he fades away. You'll wake up a little dazed on the plane of air, without any hard feelings of hope. in front of the Prince of Frost's quarters. You'll have to defeat them in order to enter. out into the snowy garden. A peculiar patch of grass grows in its center, along with a flower that emanates a magical, chilly aura. The flower crumples away into nothing in the palm of your hand and instantly regrows in the soil. The newly sprouted flower glows blindingly for a moment and, unexpectedly, a shockwave rocks the palace. To your surprise, the ballroom is now covered in twisting vines and familiar flowers. I thought I eradicated those flowers a millennia ago. Now they're everywhere! Snarls the Prince of Frost. Outlander, you will fix this! I'll tell you 
into a block of ice. Lady Lazuli informs you that there were only two Eladra nobles she didn't recognize. Resident social butterfly of the Prince of Frost's court. The snowdrift tells you that Lord Beryl was last seen slinking off to the kitchen in search of a fresh bottle of wine. Then he shoes you out of his crowd of adoring nobles. says that Dame Allegra has gone to explore the Prince of Frost's quarters. Speaking with her is the next step in solving this plant puzzle. Eladra Noble stands at the base of the stairs that lead to the Prince of Frost's quarters. This must be Dame Allegra, the mysterious newcomer you're looking for. Dame Allegra saw a hooded stranger plant the frosted cerise in the garden. She bids you to follow her there, so she can help you search for clues about the culprit. Growth of blossoming vines has sprung up around the ground. Dame Allegra stands in the center of the garden. She lets out a low chuckle. Did you like my little prank? <laughs> it was good fun. Riling up that gloomy prince always entertained my master here some. <laughs> Allegra transforms into a lion. She ignites a new Night caused such trouble for the gate to come back and storm me. Happy to see me, dearie. It'll be for the last time. <laughs> Hayden's pants. I think that's enough taunting for one day. I let my pretty petals finish you off. With a mad cat, she vanishes. <laughs> In her place, a shambling mound rises to attack. The mass of flowers and vines crumbles into ash. Yet it leaves behind one last frosted cerise flower. You pluck the frosted cerise flower from the snow. This time, the bloom stays in the palm of your hand, instead of crumpling away into nothing. Return to the Baroness to tell her what happened. Though the Prince himself would never admit to it, the Baroness tells you he is in your debt for thwarting the Night Hag's scheme. And now that you have the frosted cerise, you're one step closer to waking Lord Arden. The Prince of Frost glowers down at you. Yes? Why have you come here? Out with it! The Prince of Frost chuckles. But his eyes remain cold and hard as they bore down at you. <laughs> you come asking for favors when you impose on me by your very presence? 
Not many would dare to overstep so... so cavalier. But as I feel numb with tedium, I will allow it. You will perform the three tasks I have set for you. Only then will I consider your request. The Prince of Frost waves his hand, and a trio of portals open nearby. Go, and be quick about it. Each second you stand here is a second of my patience being siphoned away. You find yourself inside the base held by the Rebel Bandits. The Prince of Frost wants you to retrieve a wine chalice that they stole. Trolling sentries to wake everyone up. It may be possible to sneak past the sentries and through the sleeping bandits without needing to fight. directly at you and howls. Now the sounds of the bandits awakening can be heard throughout the cavern and you'll have to fight your way through. be a shame if it were to be left behind. This is the missing wine chalice that the Prince of Frost requested.
injured guard calls out to you. You there. You, you have the look of an adventurer. The villagers have been captured and dragged off by those brutish Fomorians. I'm in no shape to do anything about it. Rescue them, please. I beg of you. You overhear an argument between the Fomorians. Perhaps there's some way to take advantage of this strike? Lurtz considers your words, then gives a single nod. He begins heading towards where he last knew his brother to be. to my hall then he attacks the fomorians have been defeated and the village is now safe you've arrived at rhymes refrain one of the prince of frost's favorite venues he demands that you remove the griffins that seem to have made their home inside the amphitheater a number of griffins are perched throughout the amphitheater. They look at you apprehensively, but make no move to attack. You skillfully tend to the griffins' wounds. In time, the griffins will be able to return to their usual lairs. The amphitheater can now return to regular use. That takes care of one favor for the Prince of Frost. Now that you've done these three favors for the Prince of Frost, perhaps he'll return one. The tramp of approaching boots echoes through the amphitheater. Then a vicious voice calls out. The ones who bring me the Matreon tag gets an extra share of gold! The hunters have caught up to the injured matriarch, but she is in no condition to fly. To once again even the scales, the Prince of Frost agrees to lend you his powers in reaching Hearsome's fortress. You can now proceed with the final part of your plan, trading Hearsome's needle for the Codex pages. Snow drifts into the open gateway of the abandoned lodge. You spot here, Sam, the Prince of Satyrs through the gate. We meet again, Bear. I say you're still here, carrying out your duties. You know that I am bound to this place, Prince. It was your command. You don't seem very enthusiastic about it. As it happens, I'm about to have a very important meeting here, and I don't wish to be disturbed. I'll need some guards. Reliable guards, not a grumpy old flea bag like yourself. Oh, let's see. Yes, that should do it. Don't bother to get up, bear. I wouldn't want to interrupt your busy sketch. The bear looks up at you. He's known you were there all along. You might as well come in. He grumbles as he opens the gate. The bear agrees to help you find the Baron, but first you must bring him three items. Thank you. 
the four Morians, twisted giants who live in the caverns beneath the fable. To strip the glass off of the dead four Morians, and they immediately shrink down to your size. Their magic, of course. The portal flickers to life, and a dark figure steps through. Here you are, Archfey. I have come as you requested. Have you obtained the Codex pages? You open the door and step into the massive Sky Oak, only to find yourself plummeting downward. Naturally, naturally. Good. Tomorrow, you gave my but once I was concealed by the enchantment, I was able to make off with the pages and leave those druids none the wise. Let us be done with this. Oh, maybe There are two sides to this deal. And how can I be sure that you'll deliver what you've promised?
group of sky oak saps seeks out of the massive tree. You pick up the sticky sap. What could the bear possibly want with this? to transform the entire Feywild. Return it to what it was before the Eladrin littered it with carts and palaces. This was once a place of unfettered freedom, touched only by the pure hand of nature. Nature. Yes, you needn't worry about that. I have found a place that civilization has never touched. A place where nature is unbounded. The gnome baker tells you that he doesn't have any owlbear butter. A gingerbread golem that he created has run off with his entire supply, along with a collection of delectable custard-filled cakes. All you need do is open the door. Someone new with the same magic that turned bread into me. You keep talking about this door, well and good. But what I need is the key. I'm going to bake a whole friend army. You'll receive it when the time is right. We will arrange one more meeting where we'll make our exchange. All that's left of the gingerbread golem is a huge pile of crumbs. Amid his remains, you find a large pot of owlbear butter. Yet, as you seem impatient, so I have brought a gift. Corrupted unicorn. A breed found nowhere in this place. You are effective spies. Effective spies, you mean. But no worries. I'll find a use for them. I'm sure. Remember, Archway, you're not the only one who can do me this service. From the giant's blood, reach deep inside the bear's mouth and pull out an eladrin. A black unicorn bursts into the room and a voice sounds in your mind. You have tampered with one of Hearsome's servants. My new master demands that you be punished for your impudence. Baron Bitterspine says he knows a secret that could defeat Hearsam. You should deliver the news to Winwood Hall. You can use that information to plan your next move.
You arrive at Hearsome Stronghold after a long, long climb up the ice staircase. The Prince of Satan is near the entrance, playing a melody, while his servant Hermia flits nearby. Hearsome looks up, not at all surprised to see him. Ah, here at last. I trust you didn't get trust me. Welcome to Dustfall Overlook. A prime example of my name. See how the birds deer, the trees alive, the reclaimed the ruins of this gladiator palace. Here you say goodbye to the secrets from the elaborate courts to the whole thing. You seem impatient to start a journey. Worry not, it will begin soon, but first. I hope to teach you about what I want to achieve. Once you complete the lessons I have designed, we will speak again. But until then, here's some bows, then disappears. Hermia says that before you can meet with this, you will need to find a curious door glimmers into view. Even curiouser. It vanishes mere seconds after it appeared. You decide to keep your eye out for it as you complete Hissom's lessons. You tumble out of breath into a shaded grove where Hissom's herd of corrupted unicorns stands in the grass. Scar regards your presence in the grove with obvious disdain. But she tells you about the deals she made with Hissom, that she and her herd may roam free in the remade Feywild pillaging and ruling the land here some grants them as they see fit. Dust boats drift through the air, while cobwebs charm the corners of this corridor. Hearsome's voice floats in the air, coming from everywhere and nowhere at all. I have provided you with a feast for the senses. Once you and your fellows are ready, step up onto the table. But be aware. You'll be shut in until you learn your lesson. Or you will your demise. You're surprised to discover that a watchword. <laughs> you hear a loud rumbling noise, which strangely reminds you of your Open, the Fomorian walks out into the chamber. Finally, for Eladrin for supper, he shouts. You collected a watchword and killed the hungry Fomorian. Now you are free to leave the Hall of Objects with a new understanding of Hearsome's ideals. Sater and a small band of musicians stand in a crumbling amphitheater. Sater flashes in the scene. As you stand into the amphitheater, Fort Hullet slams shut behind you. There's a voice drifts into your ear with a far off strain of music. Now it's time for you to learn of my music. See this band of revelers before you? Best them. And you will be given the gift of my song. Use it wisely. Standing by playing the fiddle has revealed another section of this wing. Hearsome's voice booms into your ears. So, you've mastered the bass fiddle.
gargoyle perches on a high ledge inside this room. Maybe I can help you find your way. Gormaline shudders as even more of his stone body chips off. One more strong blast should do the job. The red signal crystal on the wall lights up when you pull this lever. A solitary gargoyle statue rests in this chamber. Now that you have collected both watchwords, you can unlock the door to the room. The root barrier disappears. Behind it, you notice a strange of labyrinth. You found the exit. Now that you have the watchword, you're free to leave. This door has been sealed with a magic incantation. Only the two watchwords can unlock it, which Hirsum has hidden in his stronghold. You clear your voice and speak the watchwords aloud. The door rumbles and creaks open, revealing the path to the roof. You can confront here some of them. You step out onto the roof of Duskfall Overlook. Vina, congratulations are in order. Hearsome says, "You made it this far, but I have just one kind. All you see before you is an illusion." Of what the wild is. And two familiar figures in the illusory versions of Lord Arthur. Can leave, a cold, commanding voice peals out. What have you done? We had a deal, Hearsum. To be sure, replies Hearsum. A bargain's a bargain. And I will deliver in time. I've simply lent these codex pages to these martial adventurers. They have such short lifespans, after all. It would be no trouble at 
to bring them to you when they die. A century or three should do it. Deep voice booms through the cavern. Turn back, stranger. Weak reeds are not welcome in my workshop. Sensing your surprise, she motions for you to speak with her. The Dryad calls for the test to begin, and creatures completely brings the a gesture and a door opens a gnarled wood wolf carefully picks through a pile of brambles plucking out the largest and sharpest thorns surely this is the thorn right the thorn right explains that he crafted a magic needle for hearsom a needle that now contains hearsom's immortality the prince of satyrs then took that needle to some place called the treasure grove
last tree reaches upward to the sky. Yet some form of corruption has gripped its roots, slowly twisting and transforming this ancient sentinel of the forest. These root tunnels are full of life, yet something seems off. A sense of unease hangs in the air. Time to find the source of the corruption, then has to stop. An ugly red magic barrier blocks the way down to the tree's heart. A strange red light fills these root tunnels, draining away the life in them. The barrier flickers out as the first orb is destroyed. As the second orb is shattered, that sense of unease felt faint. The barrier collapses when the third orb is destroyed lifting the sense of dread from this area. A second barrier blocks the path down. Looks like a more the root walls and attack. The root tunnel ahead is nearly dead. It's begun to drop away from taxes. Final orb in the northern root tunnels destroyed. Crackling sounds can be heard from the barrier. With the orb gone, the second barrier collapses in on itself with an audible crack. The root tunnel lurches suddenly as several blights form. <laughs> Magic word, the Fomorian snaps the barrier back into place. However, you notice a crack in the base of the barrier you can squeeze through. Here, Gold the Blightmaster crumples to the ground, gasping. I was so close. So close. Here, Gold the Blightmaster snarls. Turn back, vermin. You're not powerful enough to stop me from turning this into a Gothias tree. The Fomorian is dead, and the ritual ends. 
All that's left is to tell the pixies it's safe to return to the blessed tree.
My knowledge grows, and with it, my power. the greenery itself. Last tree reaches upward to the sky, yet some form of corruption has gripped its roots, slowly twisting and transforming this ancient sentinel of the forest.
have you come for the hag? Asks the master of the hunt. My hunters report she l Don't let her pray use one of the portals. Use these bags to summon my huntsman. My hag will try to avoid the huntsman. That doesn't mean, though, they're invincible. <laughs> Where would the sport be in that? Muses the master of the hunt. Each of my huntsmen are bound to the hunt. But when you remove their banner, you free them of their service. What they do with their freedom is your problem, not mine. The master of the hunt chuckles. If you like, you can defeat wild beasts out there to gather more lost banners. Then use them to corral the hag towards me. In this gully, she will find true death in my the air nearby with me. It seems to be coming in from up above. If you got to higher ground, you could look to the source of this destruction. Oh, where did I put it? Where did it go? Beatrice mutters and rubbing her hands. Oh, Cadence will have my head, and here's some will turn us into worms. The master of the hunt calls to you in the distance. It seems you didn't need my help after all. Impressive! Come see me for your proper reward. Most impressive! Laughs the master of the hunt. May this treasure serve you well in hunts to come. Today, you proved yourself a worthy hunter. <laughs> worthy prey. You cannot find any sign of the Somewhere in these woods, there is treasure that grows on trees. One specific tree deserves more attention than others, for it bears the chest containing Hearsome's magic loot. Thank you. 
Something stirs inside, and then a blink, a blank dog falls. But something blinks out. Here we go. The raven is slain as it falls to earth, an egg rolls out. Thankfully, the egg doesn't move. Yet. Among the shell fragments, you see the glint of something. It looks like an a small winged shadow sweeps down from the sky and plucks the needle out. Just as you reach for it, with a victorious Yoink! the tiny dragon-like creature darts away with its prize. <laughs> The little dragon disappeared through this portal, taking your eyes with him. As you pursue the creature into the cave, you hear its excited voice up ahead. Aha! Adventurers in my way! The little dragon bounce, the little dragon announces. We're gonna play hide and seek. The first, you close your eyes. No peeking. You count it down, and then find me, and catch it, and then, and, and then, and then you run.
the little dragon jumps up and down. What fun! <laughs> Thanks for being so really entertaining. You can have it. I just wanted to have a friend all along. With Hilton's precious needle in hand, we prepare to offer him a bargain he can. 